All right, hey everyone. Um, so today we're we're talking about web scraping with Auto Hotkey, and it's funny because in in Thomas, I'm glad you're here because uh, this stemmed from during a call, what like two or three months ago, yeah. you had asked about a little bit of history of web scraping with Auto Hotkey, and on the fly I rattled off a few, but then I thought about it. I'm like, you know, it really is even for us, it's hard to keep in your head of all the different options. So I thought. Let's create a nice system with some attributes and some dates and things I didn't know on the point of my head at the, right then at the time, uh, different approaches. And then we'll discuss the pros and cons of each way, depending on what you're doing. So, uh, again, this is, this is you know, built for the hero group. So those of you on YouTube, you're watching a, a replay, uh, but I am making it available for you guys. But if you were here, if you were a hero member, you could have been here asking questions and you know, interrupting us, which, <laughs> which, uh, which was the point I was just going to say, like one of the points of the call is we're going to be discussing our experience, but it is open to to you if you want to ask any questions or yeah. have any input or any experiences on, on your end. That's okay, too. We are just kind of like discussing the options. Available. Well, because I think most of you guys will agree that the real one of the big benefits of the Hero Group is meetings where you can interact and ask questions. And, and you know, it's not just watching a video where... Maybe we answered your question. Maybe we didn't. <laughs> exactly. All right. right. So let me share my screen. I actually have a spreadsheet put together. In it here, we have, I think these are nine, if I counted right before. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Nine different things. Now, these are the dates. So basically, the first couple have been around forever. And then these are the dates when they, for the most part, became available. Um, so we're going to start linearly, and we're going to start here on the left. But what we're going to do is we're going to discuss them across these different attributes. And what Azaz and I did was rated them on a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being, you know, really, really good or great or whatever, and 1 being bad. And then that allowed us to either create, you know, a sum value I could have done or an average. And we, we have the averages down here, which allows us to then kind of say overall, you know, which one do you want to use? But as with all things, it's really dependent on what your application is at that time and many other things that we're going to get into during this call. Right. The most important thing is to know that they're available because sometimes you cannot use one of the options, but then you know that you could use the other, right? And so in general, just the idea is we're going to be rating them in very, and this is totally subjective, right? This is just something that we consider based on our experience, uh, what might be the value, but this, you guys with your discussion might change, right? Well, and, general, yeah, we, we kind of treated each of these things as sort of equal in value, but in reality, I should have had another column here that says how important is this, because for some people, if you're not more advanced in programming, suddenly you want a simpler solution. Right. That's right. Okay. So uh, the first thing, uh, the first two options, which is image, search, and sending keys, there, there have been in AutoHotKey, as far as I understand, since the beginning. So since I started coding in it 15 years ago, you could access any of those. But we start with image search uh, at the moment. And AMT, can you, what is AMT at this point? Automate my task, because it's, it's Automate my task, exactly. Yeah, you're okay. doing image search, yeah. Right, so um, searching for an image in your computer, in your screen, and then going ahead and performing actions like clicking on it or doing stuff like that is a way for you to automate uh, a lot of tasks. And if you're web scraping, that means that you're getting data from a browser. You know that automating browsers is a little bit annoying. Sometimes you might resort to going ahead and finding an image on your screen and just go ahead and clicking on that. So that's one way of doing it. Now, uh, Joe, can you go ahead and tell me what we're going to be talking about on the category section? So Well, we'll just... You know, we, we don't have to address each point, but mm -hmm. the, the big ones are, hey, if you're doing this on your on one computer, your computer, it it's, can be somewhat reliable. But boy, when you get to doing it on, you try to take that same code and run it on different computers, it you know what, it breaks a lot, right? This is where yes. it's not robust. Um, but it is super overall, really easy. Any Almost anybody can do this, right? right. Um, but hey, which is what in our last hero call we were just talking about. There's no direct access to the DOM, right? So this, we gave it a one. It really should be a zero in reality. Uh, there is no there, access. There is yeah. no access to the DOM, which yeah. is really um, important because a lot of times access to the DOM helps you out a great deal, especially in web scraping. So if you don't have access to the DOM, <laughs> yeah. you're going to be playing with fire there. Yeah. 
Now, you, you made a 10 here. We did a 10 there and in the approach that works on many browsers and the access to all headers. So especially when you're dealing with authentication, if you're just grabbing images from your screen and clicking, well, you're already authenticated on that browser, right? So you don't need to deal with it. Right. That's basically the reason why this is so high, because we don't have to deal with authentication methods and stuff. You're letting like the browser do the work. Yeah, exactly. So now, it is. Uh, for us, I think I wouldn't recommend image search most of the time. Like it's very rare that I go ahead and try to uh, do image searching. On a browser, I, can, I don't think I've ever done it. Yeah. Yes. Can I add something to this? Um, yeah, you know, re regarding the uh, the uh, image search working on many browsers, I actually had the um, had the issue that even when I was working with image image search on my own browser, I had quite a few issues. So, um, you know, I don't know why, but it, like the image detection in the browser just wasn't very uh, reliable. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to uh, to switch to another um, uh, approach that you you will talk about later that right. worked very right well. Now. And that's where, by the way, if you're using the straight up uh, Im image search versus doing like a fuzzy match with pixels, which there are some things that will do, do not look for an exact match, but a, a fuzzy exactly. match, mm -hmm. it can get a little easier. But again, it's, you know, if you're. And this is a great point there because image search has a parameter for having a little bit of a, ma a fuzzy matching. So if the color is not exactly the same, you could allow it, I don't know, a variation of 20 pixel or 20. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried, I couldn't get it to work this Whoa. way, but, uh, you know, maybe that's it was the reason. <laughs> but no, no, that's the reason why we don't recommend yeah. it that often. It's yeah, not yeah. you. It's just that it's not reliable. That's right. right. Yeah. And the, that, that's where like the fine text function it flattens the colors usually down to like two and and then it's it's better but you know better what is it like a better looking pig you're gonna kiss like you know i don't know if it's really better because you're dealing with something that's just not a good approach yeah because you're just searching for the shape and not the colors that's right now the next one would be sending keys tabs and clicks now uh, in the previous call we also discussed sending 10 tabs for example um, using the send command, using the tab, and then putting 10 right next to it, because that gives us a solid way of navigating through a program. But that usually, um, it has to be a program that allows tab navigation, because some programs right. don't allow that. And even and in sometimes our hotkey, the navigation isn't what you would think. That's what I was going to say. Even oh, in sorry. our hotkey, right? Even in our hotkey, I could disable the tab for one control. And when you hit tab, it just jumps that control. Uh, so again, it, it might not be in the order that you're expecting, or in some other cases, well, the tab actually goes in the order in which the controls were created. So if they're created in a specific order that is not the visual order, they might jump around in a very well, weird way. Or correct me if I'm wrong on this, Isaiah, sometimes they don't have a tab stop, and so you can't That's actually I mean, navigate. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, so a particular control might not have a tab stop there and you're hitting tab five times and it just jumps right over that control. So even though it is a little bit more reliable, um, well, we, we ranked it the same with image search um, because it might be okay. But you know, I, I, I'll put that up one more. Let's make it a six, right? right. I would say it's just a little bit more reliable. Yes, yeah, sure. It's a little bit more reliable. Uh, but and again... And it's super easy, right? That's one of the things anybody can do this. It's so simple. Yeah, you don't need to know auto hotkey for that. <laughs> just, uh, you know the key tab. If you know that you can use the send command with a tab, then that's it. You're good to go. <laughs> that's it. Now, again, we have similar values in everything else. Um, you know, yeah, the one that says requires downloading and installing EXE, we're saying that they're good because you don't have to. Right. Because our hotkey itself can do that. So a, a higher value there means that it's good. So we don't have to install anything. Then we go with Selenium. Actually, how many people know Selenium in here? Yeah, the real Selenium, yeah. The, the, yeah. the original one. I so, don't want to have a Selenium on my PC. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want to talk about it, right? <laughs> he doesn't want to I, even talk about uh, it. Yeah, I, I once I tried to set up Selenium and I was not able to set up. So then I quit. I yeah, you quit. Right. Yeah. And we will be reflecting that in the in the score here. 
because um and, and again this is a very old thing it is from 2017 well, right yeah right at least the library that we had for auto hotkey which is what we're referring to right um now it is really reliable okay so if you know how to use it it will work on your computer and in somebody else's computer it it might work with even other browsers do we have that approach to other browsers that yeah absolutely. Seven, that right, yeah that's right. A, a seven right there so it's good in that but ease of coding ha, no not really so the ease yeah. of coding with that well, is not really easy. It, even just setting it up, getting it to install properly is can, not simple. You know? right. and, 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 and yeah, that's the reason why we gave it a one on requires downloading and installing because you not only need a hotkey, but you also need the Selenium executable and also the library files. So you have to install several files. You need the library, the executable plus a hotkey. So yeah, it's not a portable solution. You might need it, for example, if you're a web developer and you're testing automation, like automation automation testing on a lot of browsers, that might be a very good solution, but it's a permanent solution. It's not for your end users. I thought you were gonna say something, yeah. uh, Zio. right? Maybe not. <laughs> so, and then we were talking so, about UIA, right? To me, it's actually interesting is for us, the score was actually lower than this one, right? Like it yeah. it had such promise. I remember finding the, the post in the forum when it came out and I played with it. I'm like, oh my God, this is so awesome because now we can automate Chrome or Firefox because um, IE, which we'll get into a little bit later, it, you know, was interesting. But um, then it was using it was just, wow, you know, it's a pain. painful. Yeah, it was painful. All right, so UIA, this is very, uh, June 2022, right? This is very, very recent. This was, yeah, that was recent. Um, the library, at least for AutoHotKey, at least a stable library right. was recent. Yeah, um, actually, to back up a step, the UIA library, you know, overall architecture has been there for a long, long time. Years. We didn't years. have a good library, not a hotkey for easily automating it, connecting to it and using it. That is correct. Now, uh, the UIA, the UI automation uh, section, uh, the library is easy, you know, to fairly easy to work with. It's not like extremely simple. At least the, the most basic commands that you can do are okay. But the problem is that it's not intuitive. Sometimes if you have kind of what is called a toggle pattern, the toggle, does you cannot click on it because the toggles you can expand or collapse, whatever that means, right? So whenever you're um, working with UIA, you would have to understand the patterns. And by patterns, they mean like visual patterns. What is text, what is a button, what is a, you know, a accordion and stuff like that. And each of them have different actions and stuff. So just because of that, it becomes really complicated. It's really complex. Well, I, I would add, I, I don't at all disagree with what you said, Isaiah, but I would add to it and re remind you that you, I, this this thing is in a class. So first off, you got to understand how to program and use a class. Not that they're that hard. And of course, you can take our objects and classes course, right? To, yeah, that's to, right. But then you're talking about each web page is developed differently, and you know how. Th then there's the UI, the um, Usability, you know, integration, uh, not integration, uh, but the model of how they applied it and the, the developer used it, right? This is why web browsing is so complicated because everyone develops their pages differently and it just makes it, you're right, it's it's really complicated. Um, now, right. we gave it a better score overall because it, it does, um, it is programmatic. It's still, this is the weird part is these approach, actually these first two approaches, we should have mentioned this, are you're imitating a human. Right, basically, with Selenium, it is programmatic. It's an API type approach. This one is really kind of a blend of the two because it is a programmatic approach, but you're programmatically imitating a human to some right. extent. You're still imitating clicks and yeah. uh, stuff. The only thing is that you're not moving the mouse and clicking. You are sending the message Event, that you yeah. wanted to click on something. So it is a little bit more programmatic, but you're still imitating so to go to a specific page you would have to click three times for example 
which is something that we will see that might be better. Now, I noticed that um, at the bottom, you're setting whether we can access all the headers. I don't know, we haven't, uh, we haven't really explained that. And uh, what happens is that when you're working with um, uh, cookies from a browser, so you're gonna access into another website and you're logged into this website, there are some cookies that are actually saved on your computers, but there's some certain cookies that are marked as special that you, the only one who can ans ask, uh, see Access. those cookies, right, is the browser in which you are. If you try to programmatically access the cookies, the browser will send you cookies back, but not all of them. It's going to send you a group of them, right? That's what we're referring to access to all headers by image searching and sending keys. Okay, but with Selenium, you cannot do that. With Selenium, if you ask for cookies, you're going to get part of the cookies. With UIA, again, as you're actually imitating a human, you are in the browser environment, so the browser has all the cookies available. So that's the reason why we go ahead and mark it like, yeah, you can access all headers, which is good in certain situations. What was what were those called? URL hidden or URL? No, uh, it was HTTPS um, safe or something like that. I don't remember exactly. No, Anyway, yeah, I remember looking. It was going, marked. Yeah, we 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 had that issue with certain yeah. pages that we were trying to imitate. Well, just doing our own HTTP requests and sending our cookies, and they were like, "Yeah, you're not sending everything." And I was like, "But I got everything." Right. <laughs> right? So, and it took me quite a while of looking at it to go, "Wow, there were like two out of fifty that, that were not there." there. Um, <laughs> right. But they were the critical ones. They were the yes. actual. Security for you know being logged in the yeah. OAuth stuff. Yeah, they are. Like, oh, okay, swell. Um, <laughs> so I think I, Isaiah, and I both agree on this one. It is awesome we have UIA, especially because UIA can be used in almost like any program, right? It's amazing what you can take that same approach and use it with almost any program. Once you understand it, now you have a key that opens a lot of doors, not just web browsing, but just a lot right. of programs. That's However, true. which is what we said earlier too, like if you're doing more advanced web scraping, I'm going to scrape a website and do all this integrated stuff. That's a lot to ask of UIA. You know, I, I wouldn't right. wouldn't use it for that. I would use it right. for simple filling in a short form, clicking a few things, getting some stuff, setting a password, whatever. Yeah, I, I think it'd be great for that. But, but I wouldn't you do, do not it. have access to the DOM. Well, you do. You can get a DOM element, but it's not the same as the browsers you get kind of like a copy of it with a different layout um, in which you cannot do like query selector and stuff like that. It doesn't work like that. It is a DOM, it is structured correctly, but it is not, you cannot access it the same way. All right, so Chrome, and it's a shame geek dude, I don't think I saw him here, he's not here. Uh, right. I, I can't tell you how excited I was when I saw Chrome HK created, that was January of 2018. Yeah, and you know, I started playing with it. I'm like, this is amazing, and it yeah. and it was and is. Um, as you see, we give it a, a decent score. The problem is, uh, what was it? Is as it uses the ActiveX to you know to not exactly. To it? No. It, well, it it uses the development uh, interface, and it has to do some pipe connections between them. So it is WinSock. Well. Soft, right. So what happens is the way how he built the library enters into an infinite loop sometimes because every time he sends a message, he expects an answer. Right. Now he has a lot of while loops in the code. And if he doesn't get an answer, he just keeps waiting for it. And even when I tried to put a limit to that, I just found out that it was coming out to another infinite loop. So I decided, no, it's okay. I'm not going to deal with it. Um, but the, that was the only issue with it. It was an, an amazing good library, but then it would have that issue very often. Like out of five times that I ran the program, two would actually go ahead and hang. And it was just the library. Yeah, and they, it gets disconnected and then you have to try to reconnect. And, and it's just... Right, it was a little bit annoying. So let, let, let me explain a little bit about it. Okay. So we were talking about the uh, command line activation, uh, command line uh, parameters. Command yes, line yeah. parameters. Yeah. Right. So what he does uh, uh, run the form with the debugging mode command line parameter. 
which runs the Chrome browser with a <coughs> TCP port, which was 69 port. port. Yes. Yeah, for, uh, for Chrome. And uh, over that, we can connect to it using a web socket. Yeah. But, uh, but GeekDoof was using the web socket, uh, uh, side and face web socket. And oh. uh, yeah, and uh, that's, that's why, uh, or maybe the class issue or whatever the issue. Oh, so, so he was not using, yeah. he was not using the actual web socket, well, the more modern web sockets that are available. Yeah. The oh, web right. socket he was using is from the uh, Internet Explorer. Oh, Java console. I get it. Java console. So right. That, that was, that was the issue. And uh, I really tried how, tried very hard to get a web socket attached to the Chrome XK and end up developing a different because, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it does not even use the web socket. Right. Uh, and no. Yeah, I get it. it. Because it's not an easy task. Developing yeah. with web sockets and network connections is the, not the issue, simple. The issue was web sockets. Uh, uh, web sockets was the fragment fasting. What I see. Uh, the guy Shadowrun developed a hundred percent HK the mm -hmm. web sockets uh, based mm -hmm. on these uh, dudes or Benji's work uh, in talks. Mm -hmm. So I really tried hard to parse right. the fragment, but uh, mm -hmm. there was this not... off-code issue. Right. Uh, very, very deep thing. And uh, I, I just can't do it. So I was like, right. I, I'm also a noob. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> a hardcore programmer. I no, just no. read things and under I'm, I'm gonna tell understand you. stuff. I'm going to so tell I, you. Let yeah. me tell you this. I have been coding for a long time now, and I've seen a lot of things. And that's it. as soon as I saw it, and I saw that he was working with web sockets, and especially the way how he was handling, I knew I cannot just sit down and develop a web socket, even though I, I've been at it for 15 years. That's a very complex topic, so I understand why you just said, let's do another thing. <laughs> you yeah, just okay, created okay. something okay. else. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, the next section was the browser ext extensions. Uh, I do want to point out on, on, on Chrome, at least, um, regarding the issue, we gave it a low score in reliability. But the fact that you didn't have to install anything, it right. was just, just library, right? right? So right. it was really good. Um, it, but, and, and actually it, it had this, this thing of the triggering events. You see, that is the one, the only one up to now that has the highest score of 10 is because we were able to, I don't know, uh, Thomas, you are developing with a web view and you know that there's these events that when you do something, the browser answers back in Chrome AHK, that was extremely simple. It was one of the best, at least that I have seen that were easy for you to catch events. Because we um, are using the web sockets, and web yeah. sockets are bi-directional uh, connections, and uh, right. we have to uh, follow every event, uh, and uh, that's how we control or access the phone. Perfect. So okay. that was very good thing, which lacks in the stadium, because uh -huh. we need a good web socket. I can uh, uh, right. implement the I uh, give this web socket to the stadium, but uh, but you will have the I'm, same issues that he had. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, so so we just will talk about even, that in a second. Just for even parsing, but we don't need that. In Most case, of the times, not. Uh, right uh, in case, in case we really need to uh, watch the event, right? Then we need the web socket connection. Yeah. You know, now, now that you mention it, uh, actually another option that I don't see here so far uh, would be uh, to use WebView. Right. You, right. I mean, um, you, you could have your own uh, web view and you could access the DOM very reliably, actually. So that would also be an, I an option. Would, it, it is not that it's not there. It's actually the last one at the end, the COM, because the web view is now what is going to be replacing the COM object, the IE. Uh, now is the web view, but we do have it there. We, we have that in mind. Now, uh, we do talk now about browser extensions. And this one is a very little known uh, 
this one is not many people even know that you can do this. There are some extensions out there, especially in Chrome, for example. This is one of the ones that we have noticed that allow you to automate Chrome. But there's one of them that we knew, and I think there's another that allow you to connect Chrome to your desktop application. So it opens an API to your desktop applications. So what we do is that we connect auto hotkey to that extension to actually control um, the uh, Chrome in this instance. Uh, and I, the one problem with this is that uh, we don't know how it is with other browsers. You see where it says approach works on many browsers. We gave it a three because I know of it in Chrome, but we do not know if Firefox has this or Opera or Safari. But we can say that any Chromium-based browser might have this approach, which means probably all of the newest ones will be able to have this available. The problem is we don't know. So I just we just gave it a very low score. And again, uh, installing stuff. Yeah, you have to install the uh, extension. You have to have the browser. You have to install a hotkey. Sometimes in your computer, you have to install an additional executable for the executable to connect to the uh, extension. So you need the extension and the executable on top of everything. So sometimes that might not be ideal um, because you don't want to be installing stuff in certain computers where you can't. Yeah, that's what I was going to say was when when people chime in and say, I'm trying to automate this browser, and it's like there's a lot of questions you got to ask them. And, and one is, can you install, you know, other programs? Do you have admin rights? Because yeah. that alone, there's your preference on what you'd like to use, but then there's what can you actually do? And, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that you do have to have that uh, to be able to install it. But um, it is it, – now, the other thing that I don't think you mentioned, Isaiah, in, in this particular instance with Auto Control is – while you're in that extension, you're using JavaScript. So you yes. have to learn JavaScript. Now, if a lot, I'm sure a lot of people here have watched the web, uh, the videos that I did with Geek Dude on using Chrome. And he tells you there too, for the most part, most of the stuff he does when he's using Chrome is with JavaScript, where yeah. you're using that DOM and you're, you're connecting with the DOM and you're using JavaScript to manipulate it. And then, you know, depending on the website you're connecting to, you might have to look at the libraries they have installed to see right. what's available. And it just, it, wow, it was like, well, that becomes very, very <laughs> daunting. Yeah, yeah. it's correct. Now, but I, the other thing, let me let me finish real quick, is, this, um, is with auto control, what's really cool, you could actually not even use auto hotkey because they have um, hotkeys set up that you can build a hotkey to trigger and then you can it can has its own programming you know GUI for languages and stuff. So unless you need to use Auto Hotkey, you don't have to. Um, right. There there are two ways. What you can do is to, to work between the two. You can either have your script um, watch for that hotkey, you know, trigger it, and then save it to a file. Save the JavaScript or something to a file, and then you can read it or write to that file. Uh, or you can manipulate the clipboard because the auto control yeah. also allows you to shove information you know, or read the clipboard. Yeah, which which was what we ended up doing. Again, the clipboard, even though it's uh, a touchy subject, <laughs> but it's a very uh, simple way of connecting two programs that have no way of connecting each other. So you could use the clipboard temporarily, pass information well, with with commands or keywords that the other program might understand and just parse it and do whatever it is. But it's a quick way of doing that. And um, as Joe said, that particular extension allows you to read, uh, to read and set the clipboard and add a hotkey as well. So we could actually just communicate between the two using the clipboard temporarily. A, a fun way to think about that uh, of the clipboard overall, not necessarily just with web browsing, but it is the ultimate global variable, super yes. global variable, right? Like if yeah. you can have <laughs> your program and you can use the clipboard, it allows you to do stuff between programs that you wouldn't normally be able to do. That's right. That's a very good thing. Now I, I saw here that again, ease of triggering or, or ease or, of reliability of triggering yeah. events. <laughs> Here for the triggering events, well, again, as it is an extension, it has full access to yeah. all the browser events. So that means that anything the browser can communicate, oh. I could capture it and send it to AutoHockey. Speaking of which, so this one is when we went to, I had a need where I was trying to peek into Udemy and see who had purchased and go through. So I had to do all this authentication stuff. And that was where we noticed 
the no anyway it was Rafidium didn't happen in this case have it but didn't have access to all the headers but what we learned also was you know javascript has a fetch function which allows you to do api calls yes um, and so we were actually triggering api calls from within the extension the browser yeah yeah and, <laughs> and it was then like retrieving the json yeah. object and sending it back to auto hotkey via the clipboard it was, it was so very annoying. yeah because again if you are inside the browser you have access to all the cookies Outside of the browser, there are some restrictions. So we did the fetch call within the browser, and the answer. Then we actually went ahead and um, uh, referred it back to our script, so we can go ahead and parse it or or store it in a file. Because again, the browser, as it is contained, you cannot easily write to files in a programmatic way. That's actually very restricted. So we, we used AutoHotKey to read the information and save it into uh, our database. Isaias, do you recall, I think we were doing some work for AJ. I think that was the script we were working on. Yes. So we were using Chrome and we were having some of the problems with the OAuth stuff. And you actually discovered Chrome stores all of its cookies in a SQLite database. Yes. Um, and you were, you were able to open it. However, the couple of the cookies we actually needed were encrypted. <laughs> And we couldn't yeah. we couldn't figure out how to unencrypt them and you know get the actual real uh, info out. No, and no, we no. were so, so close. So you can actually use certain tools to unencrypt the data and watch it, but with the auto hotkey script, we were not able to easily decrypt it. And even that meant that I could get all the cookies I wanted, but all of them were actually encrypted. So yeah. well, I thought some of them we could actually see. I thought some of them weren't encrypted. Anyway, it, it's been a couple remember. of years. Yeah, right? exactly. I don't remember. It has been a long time. Yeah, but it was it was interesting. We were so close of like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Because oh, then, which we've done also with IE, we wouldn't even have to log in with the browser. We could log in. I'm sorry. We would log in once with the browser and then right. throw away the browser, just use the cookies from the browser for doing mm -hmm. our HTTP request. Right, exactly. Uh, but that's the, they, they need that security. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, I thought you were going to say, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the movie from from uh, what is it called? Jim Carrey. <laughs> that was Bruce his Almighty. line. Yeah, Bruce yeah. Almighty. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh. <laughs> There's it's, another it's, uh, browser extension called iMacro, if you don't know. Uh, Say it again. Uh, there is another browser extension right. called iMacro. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, iMacro. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It, provided, oh, right. it provides the uh, Chrome object and uh, through that, Using auto hotkey, you can access all the browsers okay. in Firefox. Cool. Oh, now you see. So, so, so I, there are I more extensions up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't know you could connect to the 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 DOM. I mean, that's that's awesome. I see a, a question from Calvin saying, "Can you write it?" Oh, the name. So, I macro. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah that's exactly not EYE. It. It's actually an I. Yeah, uh, yeah. I macros. There you go. The one that we are mentioning on, on on the spreadsheet is auto control. That's the one. So that's another one. But that one I think is only for Chromium based um, stuff. So now, and this is interesting. Uh, as of May twenty second, uh, so, sorry, May of twenty twenty two, we have Rufadium, <laughs> which, by the way, guys, the guy who created Rufadium is here in the call. His name is Irfan. Uh, he's from Pakistan. Or, or Zio, that's just uh, that's what's in yeah. Zio. Zio is here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he created this tool. At, by far, uh, at least in reliability, we find it uh, really good, not only in our computers, but others. Um, he has been very responsive a lot uh, for a lot of things. So we have been able to improve it very um, fast. Uh, you do have direct access to the DOM, which is great. Um, I would say that it is easy to code with it. Uh, we removed a few points just because if you have never uh, created uh, scripts that are automating browsers, you might need to learn a few concepts. But after you get the basis of it, like it is really intuitive, at least with this particular library, it's really intuitive to follow what to do. Now, again, we did remove some points for the authentication. You are automating the browser itself. So that means that you will be able to do cookies, but um, 
you might need to do the manual login to get the cookies. So it's not that the automation can be done 100% because most sites have ways to prevent that. Okay, that's the one thing. But the major uh, e problem that most people see with it is that you have to download and install, uh, well, not install, but download the web drivers. Somebody actually in the previous call, I think, uh, right away say, oh, I'm not a fan of installing WebDriver. Many people even either oh. don't like it or can't, right? We should do. We should take a step back here and explain one one subtle thing that people may or may not be aware of. Back in 2017 ish, or when you know when that was when this became available for Auto Hockey, but Selenium was probably around a bit before that. Selenium initially was the ones that created the web driver, right? Like they and they created them for each browser out there, and so it was a Selenium thing. And then later. The browser developer said, "Hey, you know what? This is a really good idea. This. Right? Yeah, we, we're going to create our own web drivers. And right. so, with Graffitium, we're not using the Selenium web drivers. We're using the web drivers from the actual browser developers. That is correct. Right? So that is correct. It's, it's a little. It, it's conf it, to me, it was very confusing wrapping my brain around it because I kept seeing like, but that's Selenium, and I'm like, right? You, oh, you, it, you it asked me like to explain that, but it was just like, yeah, they're web drivers, but." I think Selenium, the project, Selenium project started rolling the ball. And then the other people say, hey, that's great. Let's go ahead and standardize this. And now it is a standard. Actually, all web drivers must follow certain standards. And that means that if you develop with Rufadium, it's going to be practically the same with any browser that you want to automate. With Rufadium, you can automate Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Opera. I don't know if he has actually developed another for other browsers, but at least the ones that I saw that were in the code were the major ones. So, and, and the code is going to look the same for you. You don't have to know how Opera works. You just pass the same command and the web driver does all the work to translate that. So it's something that is amazingly good. That's the reason why we find it very, very reliable and why it has such a high score. For us, it's a very good way to automate browsers. At this point, one major flaw is just for our hotkey version one. <laughs> so, and, and now we know that version two is coming around the corner. So yeah, so uh, I would definitely uh, uh, say it would be good if this would be converted to version two. Um, I don't know if he has the time to do it. I certainly would love to do it, but I don't have exactly the time to do that. But it is a good thing that uh, that particular tool should be available in both our hotkeys because it's so good, actually. Um, one question regarding Rufadium. Uh, first of all, it really is a great, uh, a great tool. It allowed me to achieve what I wanted by say, by using uh, the image search, which which didn't work, and and uh, I did find a reliable way using Rufadium. So uh, yeah, first of all, again, thank you, Xeo, for for reporting it. Um, or writing it, and um, the the question is, if you run your own um, browser in uh, web driver uh, mode, right? Um, is it, is that allowed? Like, um, yeah. I, I remember having some issues where I was using my profile, and um, it. Uh, I think in the end, I even uh, opened the GitHub issue um, for that. But in the end, I think uh, you said that uh, it's there are security reasons why you shouldn't run a, a driver session with a, a user's profile. Um, so I would, uh, I was just wondering, could you elaborate on that? Is there something that you should be aware of where, you know, if you're right. using the web driver mode, maybe don't. No, know. let me, let me explain about that. It seems to me that he just left the call. Maybe the power just let, went. So uh, yeah, 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 all right. <laughs> let me just answer in, on his behalf. I do not have all the information, but let me tell you, yes, it is possible. You can connect with your own profile. Yeah, but there is, a, a and, and, and I did in the end. By the way, it, it right. worked. I, okay. Even if, if I'm not supposed to, it worked. <laughs> no, 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 no. You you can, you can, and and Rufadian has a way, has some functions that allow you to set up which profile you want to use. So mm -hmm. that's good. Now, what is happening is that when you're navigating, as you're navigating through a web driver, sites, the websites can detect that, and if they don't like it, they would block you, and they will say, "Hey, you're using a bot," I see, which I we see. saw. Which we saw. Yeah, he I, just joined, I, I saw he just joined back. Now, here's the thing. He just recently, uh, a few days ago, because I was having the same issue. I was trying to access a website. It had a CAPTCHA in it. 
Um, so I in the in the web driver tried to fill in the captcha and it was just giving me the captcha again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. just doing that, right? But he just explained and he showed me a few days ago that you can disable one of the options of the browser is disabling this web driver view, whatever it is. And then the sites cannot detect you as a bot. They would see you as a normal browser. I see, so you, I see. You. All right, he yeah. just joined the, the call back and maybe that answers your question. Later on at the end of the call, I could probably just show what he did. So you yeah, can know sure, how to sure, do it. Yeah. Or I can just send it on the um, heroes chat so that everybody can benefit from it. And that way people on YouTube will have no idea what we did. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Um, real quickly, we should have mentioned this earlier, but when you're running Chrome, you do have to run it in debug mode in order to connect to it. So, so if you're doing your right. own profile, right. is what we're referring to. So yeah. if you're connecting to your own profile, it has to be in debug mode. If you just run the default profile, it will be in debug mode by default. So, and you can run that. two profiles at the same time, I think. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You can run many instances. I Pro actually probably have... you, you, you can run the same profile once Twice. in. Uh, right. Yeah. You, 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 I'm you not really sure. In, no. Uh, we, yeah. No, we cannot run the same profile on normal browser and uh, web, web session, web browser session, because. Uh, Actually, web driver tries to run the browser in debugging mode, which access the profile folder. And uh, if that browser is running normal mode, web driver won't allow you to access that folder. Yeah, and, the, the uh, folder gets locked, right? So right. Yeah. 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 yeah you, you need to close the browser so it can access. Web driver can access your default profile or whatever profile you want to access from the web driver. But in general, that is a, so, the Refadium library is a great library. Um, if you have sure, yeah. an action, if you can download the web driver, so if it is your computer or if you're installing for end users that can do that, no actually for actually for Chrome and uh, and uh, Edge, uh, it downloads the web driver by itself, and uh, if your browser somehow updated it will ask you if it finds the driver is not running it will ask you to update the driver and if you press yes it will update the driver and run uh, and runs the sessions yeah so it is uh, more automated you don't have to deal with it because it was really complex <laughs> he had a lot of issues because the web drivers are very specific to, for very specific <laughs> versions so even in the same browser yeah. in chrome if is Chrome 86 will not have the same web driver than Chrome 85 for whatever for, reason. For Edge driver, Isaiah's helped me. Uh, he might remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was the response, HTTP response, which was encrypted. And he told me how to decrypt it. Yeah. So I had to help him out getting that information. And yeah. that's where the next topic comes in, HTTP requests. So better known as API calls, I guess. API calls, technically. That's so how we is, typically refer to it. Right. This is um, by far the most reliable way that you could do web scraping. Okay. There is, you cannot, uh, the next one that comes about is also very reliable, but this one, I would say, because you have the DOM in your hands, so you can do whatever you want. And you can do it however you want. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need the browser anymore. Right? No, you don't need the browser at all. So you're not dependent on anybody. The only however, thing... <laughs> yeah, dealing Here's with that thing. OAuth. Woo! Right. That's it's... the that's the vein of our existence. No. Uh, logging into websites that have two-factor authentication or logging with uh, the OAuth authentication. Uh, the ease of coding, nah, that's not easy. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. Um, and as uh, 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 Irfan or Tio just mentioned, sometimes you get data from the website that is encrypted. You will have to deal with it, right? So it's not something that HTTP request is going to help you at all. And you can't use uh, JavaScript, right? You just have the HTML as a text. So uh, if, if you're trying to use any uh, special JavaScript function that, that probably won't work. 
Well, what I would, I would say something about that. No. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. is I would I would state it slightly differently as just thinking of it as now you have to do all the work on top of it if you want to say that the browser was was doing for yeah. you, right? right? So now you got to play both roles. Yeah. yeah, you have to do everything the browser was doing. But here's the thing. Um, to you, Thomas, this is going to be like intuitive now that I mentioned it. At the beginning, is I had to think about it. And then I was like, hold on. I get the HTTP request, and that tells me if I have JavaScript files because I would see that there's a source file, right? So in the in the in the a, uh, a source file, or, but you can also have like an inline uh, script. You can have like a script section. No, no, in okay, your... that's okay. But here's yeah. the thing: if it is a file that I need to request, it will tell me where to request it, so I can do another HTTP request to get that. Right, JavaScript. right, right, right. If right, it's inline, yeah. I could grab the JavaScript from it, and you know what? Remember that we discovered how to process JavaScript in Auto Hockey. You remember that? That's right. But remember, remember also that this is <laughs> not like up to date JavaScript, but right. like no, no, no. it's okay. Microsoft's no, no, no. JavaScript no, from it's Windows not, It's not that. It's not that we can't because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just don't want to bother Lexicos with that stupid question. Like, right. how do I enable the normal JavaScript and web view? He's gonna be like, dude, did you search Google? <laughs> That's what he's yeah. gonna say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's gonna. So I haven't asked that, but I know that it's possible because if we are using yes. WebView two, we have access to the latest JavaScript. So I can. Oh, well, sure, yeah, right, of course. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. can load the JavaScript, but I'm I'm actually re referring to. You remember the JavaScript. Uh, function that we're using that we load it into an object, like if it was out of hotkey, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I just load the JavaScript into that object and just call the functions as is the word right. normal right. out of yeah. hotkey code. Right. So yeah. that idea of, oh, I cannot execute JavaScript is gone, right? We can in version two <laughs> because the active script about AHK library that Lexicos created for that is just for V2. It's not, uh, as far as I understand, not for V1. So again, it is possible, it is doable, but it's not easy. It's really complex. It's a very complex topic. Now, after that, everything is then very reliable, you know, doesn't require you to install or download anything. It works in many browsers, in any browser. You don't need a browser, <laughs> you don't need anything. Um, the events, well, there are no events because you have the DOM, so you just grab the DOM and do the thing. So, and and you have access to all headers. Now you can connect because the one who is blocking the cookies is the browser. If you don't have a browser, you get all the cookies and you can actually interact with everything. So it's just, now you have to do everything manually. That's all. Yeah, and I want to distinguish here the difference between uh, uh, when we say API web service calls, connecting to a public API is very, very different than imitating a browser going to a web page where typically often you'll get HTML back, maybe maybe a, a separate thing with Java, um, a JSON file. But when we're talking about it here for web scraping, it's, it's not your typical connecting to a public API, right? Like this right. is where you're imitating a browser and that's where it, again, it, it can be complicated because you're gonna make up what the browser's doing. Right, but in some cases, if we have an aspect with HTTP request, you can actually request directly to, a, to the API that the browser is requesting. And many times you get a JSON string well, back, which we can then- See what uh, I would, I would tweak that slightly as to say, when you do a call, like with your browser, often you'll see there were 20 API calls done. Yeah. And oh, you know what? I don't need to do all of these. I need just this one. And that's actually a hidden API that <laughs> yeah. they don't want to tell you about. And then I can just do that one. And, and so this is why I almost never do web scraping anymore. When people talk about web scraping, I'm like, I, I just do this approach most of the time because it's just right into the Mm, you get to the source of the matter of what you're trying to do, right? And right. you just avoid all this other crap. That's correct. Yep. The all last right. one here is the yeah. Internet Explorer via COM, which now, and that's what I wanted to mention. So Internet Explorer is dying, or ActiveX, how you want to call it. But that doesn't mean that it's dead. <laughs> it's dying, but it's not dead. Why? Because... Internet Explorer itself as a control is no longer being updated. It's not going to disappear for now. There will be a time that it's not going to be included in Windows updates, but for now, a few years, still there. 
but it is just because it's going to be replaced. The one that is replacing it is the web view control. Now, the web view control right now is an object that is not an active X object as far as I understand, which means an active X object is an object that any program can connect to, which was the greatest thing that IE had. Any program could connect to the IE object and perform all the actions in their native language. For us right now, we don't have that. We cannot do native stuff with WebView, but it looks like we're going to be able to. But the interesting thing about this approach was that it was so easy to program with it. Yeah, it was so easy. It was reliable in your computer, multiple computers. It was easy. Uh, you have direct access to the DOM. You did not have to authenticate. You had everything. Yeah. You didn't have it, to download anything, right? Yeah, it, it put the keys into almost anybody's hands to do right. you know, really cool stuff. Right. And it, it, it was... I still, this is what I, and you guys, you, you know, you all know this. When people talk about WebScript, I'll say, well, can you, I know you don't want to browse with it, but can you load it with IE? Because if you can, it's so easy to automate, right? Yes. Like now, if you're trying to do something on Facebook or YouTube or, you know, a very new, uh, JavaScript uh, intensive, right? Yeah, website, it won't work. But a lot of the things that, we, especially at work, will connect to are older sites that haven't changed. If you can still use IE, it's just night and day as far as how simple it is to code in. So, yes. and with the XML HTTP request, you can actually connect. You can you can leverage the cookies from the browser without even dealing with them. It handles it all for you. Um, yeah. And I have a, a way also with a Jackie showed me how you can connect to the the browser, the IE instance, and do API calls from the browser, which also gets around the OAuth. On the indication, you log in with your browser, and then you can do all the AP calls you want, and they can't detect what you're doing because you're using that browser to send the call. Right. It's just now, it's, it, yeah. it was some. It is well. It, it's not that you cannot use it. You can do it right now. You can open Auto Hotkey and say create. You know, GUI add Active X, and you connect to an IE. It's just that it's not going to be available uh, for a long time. So if you're developing an, uh, uh, an app. That is going to be relying on something that is going to die. I, you know, that your app is going to die too. So, <laughs> what you're going to do is either switch to um, uh, the web view two, which means you have to switch to v two, uh, or use other approaches that we have here. Wow! I, 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 when we started this, I thought there's no way we're going to make it an hour, and here we are, right at the end of the hour. But um, <laughs> which we don't, we don't have to end then, right? But it was just a, a ballpark. I figured it'd be. A, I thought there'd be a little more time for questions. Uh, right. We answered questions along the way, but didn't, does anybody have any questions right now to directly answer, or any comments? By the way, anything yep. that you want to add? I've got experience? a question. Go ahead. So with the HTTP request, and you talk about regarding some of the difficulty you might have as far as on a, a public web website, you know, someone else's website and so forth. Would that be minimized possibly? And I know you, you guys aren't on my, my company's website, but if I'm already on the company's website and they've already got me verified, then it might simplify matters as far as that request. Since I'm not going somewhere else, I'm just kind of going within my own my own house, so to speak. Does no, that make that's, sense? No. no, no, yeah, but no. So no. That's, okay. that's actually the issue. So okay. here's the thing. Whenever you're going to call that website, it's going to try to authenticate you, right? Now, you say, well, I'm already authenticated. Yeah, in your browser. Right. When well, you do the HTTP request, this HTTP request is not authenticated. Now, it's not that you cannot do it, especially if they have some ways for you to, to connect. Or if you have access to your browser cookies, you can send the cookies through the HTTP request and you don't have to authenticate well, I'd add to that though, there is, because because when I was at TI, I was connecting to SharePoint, um, kind of like you said, it's an internal you know website, this and that. And when I switched to using Win HP request, there was a header, I think it was authorization or something. It's in my syntax writer. I have a API syntax writer and it's one of the headers I have set there where you can say like, you know, uh, encryption equals one or header equals one or something. And it, it says, hey, Go use my um, actual like um, information from the computer. Like yeah, your login. right, right. So okay. it it can 
it, it it's possible. Let's put it that way, because <laughs> it may or may not work. But it, it right. did for me in that one case. Right okay. now, now here's the thing, and here's the problem. If you are authenticated in a browser and you can grab the cookies, which is easy to do, you can grab the cookies that are there and you send them via the HTTP request, the site will not know that you didn't log in. Well, it will it will understand you did. So it, the request is going to work just fine. But sometimes... But you might want to are... pass a user agent as well, just to cover your That's button. what I was going to say. Now, the cookies that you're sending, uh, some of them might be critical, some of them change. So dealing with HTTP requests of this nature is not impossible. We have done in different situations. It's just that it's tricky. And if you don't know what you're doing, it might become really like uh, complex and you might get demotivated. But most of the times, like 99% of the time, whenever we're doing anything that has to do with either web scraping or connecting to a website, we 99% of the time use HTTP requests because it's, yeah. the, it's the one that is the best. And if I, you're doing, sorry, let me, let me finish real quick. If you're mm -hmm. doing HTTP requests, um, either the developer mode or Fiddler, you know, or a tool like Fiddler is going to be your best friend. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it opens up things where you're like, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. You can see the traffic and see what's going on, and it, it really helps open doors. Actually, we, we did have uh, uh, one of the hero calls, and Calvin, as you're a hero, you can go ahead and watch the previous videos. And one of them, uh, I did a quick demonstration of how I opened the navigate well the developer tools in in Google Chrome and I saw and identified what is the call that I want to do and how I translated that to auto to auto hotkey yeah, because it, it is the 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 tool that we use the most and I have you know 15 or 20 videos on API calls in dev and some of them just showing you know walking through how to do stuff I think as ASU and I did one on using Fiddler and how to do all this stuff also, you know, just to solely, it was a, a much more in-depth point. Is, is It wasn't a really quick couple bit of thing. So yeah. anyway, yeah. But in general, I think from all these um, uh, things that we have available, the question comes, yeah, which one to use? Well, I would say most of the time, 99% of the time, if you can go with the with the last three, Rufadium, HTTP request or com, with any of those three, if you can do it with that, great. Then if you can't, then you just go down a little bit more and more. Like you use different other tools based on other needs, especially the first need. The two needs that I would always go with is, do I need access to the DOM? And do I can I install a file? Those are the main questions, right? If you can answer you know, those two, then you can decide about which ones to use because some of them you cannot access the DOM. Some others you need to install a file, and those are the most the the, the, the most restrictive things that you might encounter. The the things in purple, by the way, are things that use classes, mm -hmm. also. So if you're not using classes, don't don't look at the or learn classes. But, yeah. <laughs> Either learn classes or just don't use those because those are actually objects um, or classes. How um, you're yeah, describing you're describing. so. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in general, I think learning HTTP requests is one of the most powerful tools beside the classes. So we, we said that about the classes, you know, learning classes is a great tool. Well, HTTP requests, that's also an, the Objects for programming, HTTP yeah. requests for web scraping, for example. That's what I was going to say. The thing we didn't mention with the HTTP request also, though, is, is you got to start understanding HTTP protocol, right? Yeah. And, and understanding that, which is just a whole nother uh, right. animal, like a <laughs> yeah, different thing is. to learn. Right. But after you get the hang of it, because it is not, even though we say that they're big, it's not like really difficult to start playing with it. It's I'd say it depends on your background, but I, I understand what you're saying, Isaiah. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. If, if you have some not, programming, they're they're not horrible. No, no. But what I was going to say, even if you don't have any background, like it is not difficult to start. The problem will be that as you try to do some things that are a little bit more complex, you're gonna run into very complicated stuff. Uh, you know, CEO was having issues with encrypted data. Um, other times, uh, you and I, Joe, we have seen some. Uh, uh, websites that return 
data that say that is encoded in UTF-8, but they are not. And then you have to deal with that. You have to know what to do. If you don't know, then it becomes really complicated. That's all. And this, this may be implied in what you guys are, are talking about, but like what I'm trying to do, you might say I've got many websites, right? I've got one major one. But mm -hmm. in the end, I've got work item number 10,000. The next one's work item number 10,001. So there's different pages. I assume there's a way to program that in there about putting a variable in there at the very end. So you're always going to request the next one. Yes. Right. Request it. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's what HTTP is for. And actually, I have a script that, um, uh, that does this, is that I go ahead and request multiple tables, one after the other. Okay. The only thing that I'm going to tell you about that, do not use a loop requesting without any sleep in between. Because some servers have locking mechanisms that if you make too many requests in a specific amount of time, they would lock you out. So well, hold on. I mean, if you're doing five, five will be okay. Right. right. But, 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 right. but he said 10,000, like I didn't 10,000. I said, right. like, don't do 10,000. Don't do well, 10,000 requests honestly, in 10 seconds. Says, you know, I like, still say if he's doing it internal on a work computer, they probably won't have those restrictions. Right? It might be. It might be. Yeah. So it, it just depends. I, I do think you're right. Be cautious about it. Right. right? Yeah, just just put a sleep 200 milliseconds. It's not like a big sleep, but it right, is a right. sleep that leaves the, the, the server rest. Because if you make too many requests, it might make it so nobody can make requests. So, and that's the problem. So put, one of the things- Put in a cat your... map, not a Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if you right. want uh, more information calling at any point, you can just ask in the in the chat, we can go ahead and ask uh, answer uh, simple mm -hmm. questions in there. We do have like um, consultations available. So if it is a specific project that you're working with and you want to just have specific information about it, we can uh, give you a little bit of guidance of what to sure. look for. Um, right. These type of calls, they are too limited. We just give general information and well, we cannot go to- I understand, it. right, yeah, sure. Yeah. And and then again, dealing with what is this, I, I've said this so many times over the years, when I first started learning um, what, anything like web scraping, I was learning dot notation and I didn't realize at the time that web pages, you know, like when you learn how to automate Excel, Excel on my computer is the same as Excel for Isaiah is and the same for Scott and Mario and everybody, right? It doesn't real. it's so little changes are they're tiny. Web pages are all built drastically different in how you go about automating it. It's, it's just, it's so much more complicated. Um, so it's just a, it's, it's, this is also why people, the heroes of many times asked, like, when are you guys creating a, a course on API calls? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we the, can't. <laughs> We, I, can, well, I can give you I can give you one API, but when you go and try another right. one, it's going to be totally right. different. So right. my information is not going to be really valuable to you, uh, at least for getting the concepts. But yeah. I'm not well, exactly. There's also though, again, like you said earlier too. We the, there's the understanding, like, well, do you understand HTTP protocol? Like, you need to know so many other things and how to how to. Oh, I do need to use JavaScript at times. Okay, well, that's a whole nother you know <laughs> day just to get you started, right? Like, so anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in general, I, I, I think uh, this little table might be a little bit useful for anybody, especially if you're trying to get some data out of a website. Um, you might need a little chart and trying to decide uh, between them or knowing that they're available. Right. If you cannot access Refadium, HTTP requests or COM, send key keystrokes, send tabs, or try you know uh, an extension. If you don't know those are available, you will not even try, right? Yeah. The other thing I'll throw out there is when I'm doing something, and this came up, what were we doing? Oh, yeah, we were automating um, Canva. And there was no select all button for the items in our list. As Ace and I were both dumbfounded, like, because we had, like, you know, a lot of things. And you couldn't just select all. You couldn't click a button. And so... <laughs> It's kind of funny because Isaiah Isaiah and I both we, we want to automate it as far as programmatically, but I'm like just just send tab and a space bar and and select the thing and just loop over the things, and so he he wrote it in about ten seconds and it worked right. It was like hey, that's perfectly fine for this situation where it's a one off thing. I'm not going to use it. And even then, even if we were going to use it over and over, that would probably be okay because it's so simple, right? But taking into account you know, how often am I going to run it? Am I running it on multiple computers? Um, there's so many things to take into account when you're deciding on your approach. 
This is this is why I, I wish I could put it all in a little step diagram. Here's how you decide which approach you should take, but there's a lot of things to take into account. Yeah. Just keep in mind every single additional library that you put in your script, every additional line of code in your script is an additional point of failure. So if you are, for example, what we said, oh, if it is just selecting a few things in Canva, why would I want to add a library that can break and 10 more lines of code that can break if I could just write two lines of code, loop and send tab, you know, space. Usually this, the simplest approach is the best approach. Sometimes that might not be the case. And yeah. in web scraping, that's not usually the case. I'm going to I'm gonna disagree with Isaiah slightly there because <laughs> for him, each additional line adds one point where it might break. For me, it's more like a square, you know, or, or to the power that it might break the more I add because it just, yeah. it starts getting crazy. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. Are there any, any other, other questions? questions to... right? Almost has a question about the Fabian running a Brave browser. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Irvin? You said Thomas has a question, or? Yeah, Thomas can uh, raise the question. Uh, send me the link in the chat. Oh, let me see. Hold on. I don't, I don't know chat. why I don't see it. Oh, maybe he sent it to you. Um, I don't know if Thomas is He there. must have written it just to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not really sure. So, everyone, let me share it to everyone. Yeah. That's the link. Oh, to Refidium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's an issue that he raised. So he was actually explaining that um, he wanted to be able to um, navigate, but it seemed to be that the page was um, finding oh, the... it, seeing it as a bot. But I think, um, oh no, hold on. It says invalid user data is already in use. I think we already discussed that he cannot have yeah. both running at the same time. Yeah. The issue is we cannot uh, access the profile that is already being accessed normally. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, the second issue is uh, about the binaries, the brave exe. Okay, so the issue, uh, the location of the executable for 64 bit and the 32 bit is different and i haven't implemented that because it's confusing because few people install the 64 bit on over 32 bit uh 62 few people install 32 bit brave yeah. on 64 bit os and uh, some people install 64 bit os on 64 bit brave or oh, oh, that's confusing yeah. uh, so it is really confusing yeah but, but at this point i think um what we're going to do i'm going to talk to him because i think i have uh, uh, we can talk outside and explain because his case is a little bit specific and i will go ahead and explain a few other uh points of data for him I, okay, okay. I just thought of one other thing we should have mentioned, even, even though this was this was a webinar on web scraping with Otto Hutton, right? Here's the thing that I, I do want to throw out there. When I was learning Python for a while, um, I was doing some web scraping with Python and some of their libraries. And in Python, it's true multi-threading. And I went and got like a thousand um, tickers, you know, and their values from the stock market. And the speed difference between AutoHotKey and Python in that example, because AutoHotKey is not multi-threaded, and I'm, right. it's it's waiting for one, wait for the next one, do the next one, now wait for that one, go to the next one. It's night and day, right? So if you're doing a big volume type thing, you really might consider using a different language that is multi-threaded. Or, I mean, AutoHotKey has AutoHotKey H, which is multi-threaded. Yeah, it can but, allow you multi-threaded. But you'd have to develop a whole library around it, right? Versus exactly. with Python, I think it was Beautiful Soup, and I used one other one. I forget what it was. But it, it was already there. It was so easy, right? I didn't have to go create a bunch of stuff. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. This was, uh, I, I think, a fun <laughs> and interesting topic. It's... It's a, it's a great idea for um, to cover because it is confusing. There's a lot of information you need to know just in making a decision on which one to use, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. 
So see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Actually, tomorrow we have one call, right? Yeah, tomorrow's our Saturday call. Um, so hope to see you guys there. Again, if you're not a, a Hero member, consider joining. It's uh, You'll have access to things like this. Plus, we do two hours on Fridays and one hour on Saturdays of live office hours like this where we, we help each other and learn from each other. And um, it's awesome. Awesome. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.